Thank you very much, and hi. Wow, I can see people. I wasn't expecting it to be anything more than a big dark cave. Um, first thing I want to do before I get started on the actual presentation is to say a very big thank you to Seattle and Moz for being beautiful and bringing the love, because that's what it's about. Um, to all the people who have come here from somewhere else other than, than Seattle, like from whether it's 100 miles away or some other country in the world, awesome for doing that. And I would like to say a very special word to all the Aussies who have actually come all the way to, uh, to MozCon. So, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! There's a few out there. That's what I was hoping for. OK, so let's get started. This presentation is called 10 Link Removal Pro Tips That Will Change Your Life. That might be a little bit hard for some people to actually believe, but uh, I'm going to show you that it's not always the way, perhaps, that you might perceive things. I think we've learnt that fairly well over the last three days anyway. So the first thing I want to put right out there is that link removers can actually be tag fee too. And that, you know, a lot of people go, yeah, sure, right, no worries, you know, it's scum of the earth, all that kind of stuff. But I'm here to prove it to you. So here we go. Not to overstate the obvious, link removal does have a bad reputation. And there are, you know, it's not hard to find reasons for that. If you actually um, look at what's going on out there, you know, you see all sorts of things happening. It could be because of this guy who was so generous that he decided if someone didn't actually respond to his email, could have been in their spam filters, might have been busy, whatever it was, he was going to actually lodge a spam report against their site. Now, that's just awesome, really, isn't it? This guy, who actually decided to tell everyone that he emailed to, that uh, you know, he has a special relationship with Google, that Google have actually asked him to uh, let them know about any website that doesn't comply with their link removal request. I mean, that's awesome. That's just amazing. They've also asked, apparently, for domains and IP addresses, which is, you know, that's what you ex would expect, I guess, if they really want the information and suggested that he make a complaint to the hosting company. This gets, get, gets better and better as it goes along. But what really wraps it up in a nice, neat little package is that he actually then blames them because they're hosting the link he placed there in the first place. Really cool. So it may also be because of the types of people who are actually trying to do the right thing, but maybe don't have the right attitude. This lady actually says that she, in her experience, gets about 15 to 20 percent of links removed when she does a campaign. Uh, really, if you're prepared to settle for that and you think that's the way it should be working, you're doing it wrong, you probably need to rethink. So what actually happens? One of the reasons people actually find it difficult to do link removal and to, to have successful outcomes is that they make lots of assumptions about the task before they actually start. So it's pretty easy to figure out what those assumptions are. Some think the work is thankless. It's so bad, it's going to make a kitten sad. I mean, come on. Some think success is impossible. Why bother? OK? And you, know, you can see how people could kind of be faced with you know, 40,000 links to remove, 10,000 domains, got to contact all these people. Oh my god, how is it ever going to be successful? And some people think they've just got themselves into such a situation that, you know, nothing good can come of it. It's all too late. Let's kind of just, you know, lay down and die, let the world roll over us. Well, frankly, all of those are just wrong. Now, I don't, I don't want anyone to kind of, you know, take any inference out of the Independence Day thing since it's so close, but you know what I mean. OK, so the other thing that actually gives link removal a bad reputation is what people say about it. And in this industry, what do we do? We all read blog posts, we find out what people are talking about, and there are lots of people out there who have their own opinions about the whole link removal thing in the first place. For some people, it's all Google's fault, they should just fix the problem, let everyone else get on with life. For some people, it's all the webmaster's fault, because, you know, they host the links, they should just, you know, go and take them away without any problem at all. Doesn't matter if it's costing them time, staff resources, all that kind of stuff. You know, you owe me, you should actually do what I ask you to. And for some people, it's actually the site owner's fault. You went out, you spammed in the first place, or you did something that maybe is now not, not seen as being quite so good, so it's all your fault. Everybody wants to blame somebody else, and, you know, that's what happens. But I'm here to tell you, it can be rewarding and satisfying. If you're doing link removal, you can get emails in your inbox with smiley faces. 
You can have people who actually started out as that person who said, it's impossible, it can't work, nothing good can come of it, sending you an email that says, good things come to those who wait. That's a nice little satisfaction. You can get thank you notes in your, uh, in your mailbox. You might even get something bigger than that. I haven't yet, but I'm waiting. Okay, success is possible. And the most obvious success, of course, is when you get that message that says the manual spam action is revoked. And it's really interesting to know now from the people we work with that that's happening a lot more than it, has, uh, the one, than it was when things first started out doesn't necessarily mean the end of people's problems, but it's a success. Uh, and I've got to say, the most amazing good can come of it. OK, so let's face it, here I am, standing in front of you at MozCon 2013, talking about link removal, and you know it's all down to that. It's all down to link removal. And even better than that, I spend the majority of my time these days working for a tiny, tiny little startup that is punching it well above its weight in the industry, and you know, again, it's all down to link removal. So, we can all see the problems, but it's time for solutions. And this um, presentation, of course, is about pro tips, some things that can help you out. If you're faced with the problem of having to do link removal, then these are the things that can help. So, tip number one, create a separate inbox at the target domain and turn the spam filters off. I know a lot of people are going to kind of probably rear up in their chairs when I say that, but there's a reason. So first of all, separate inbox. Make it manageable. Make sure you can actually keep track and keep control of everything you're doing at the target domain. Webmasters out there are doing due diligence. They want to know that it's an a authentic request for link removal, not some competitor trying to wreck your domain. So give them what they need to know that. And turn the spam filters off, because we actually hear from them that they send back requests for more information and nobody ever answers them. Why? Because you never get the email if you have the spam filters turned on. So be a little bit um, proactive when you are actually start out. This one I like because this one's about actually getting the link removed without having to ask for it. So if you know very much about directories, many of them are built on PHP scripts and that sort of thing. Many of those directories have bots which actually go out and crawl the web to make sure that the links are still there so they don't end up linked to a whole lot of 404 pages. So if you can identify the directory sites and you can actually tell that bot that the page is no longer there, the directory will remove the link for you. So I've given you the option. This is a, um, a solution. Obviously, you can see we're a lamp shop, so that's the solution you've got in HT Access. But if you, if you work with another platform, you can go out and get someone to, to actually work out what you need to do to achieve the same thing. So basically, you find the user agent or the IP address, whatever way you can identify who it is, serve them a 404, and when the bot comes knocking, nothing to see. So the link goes. Now, there is a lot to be said for banging your head against a brick wall. If it uses 150 calories an hour, there are certain health benefits. That's fine. But really, frustration isn't great for health. So you've got to kind of weigh these things up. So one of the most frustrating things about link, link removal, about any outreach, is undeliverables. So what you need to do is look at those undeliverables and see if you can find a way to get past them. Get to know the sites that actually don't accept email and go right to the submission forms. Now, you often find when you get an undeliverable message, it will have a link in it that actually tells you no, we don't accept email at this address, and that's happening more and more with link removal. But we have a URL where you can actually submit a form. So read the undeliverable. Don't just go undeliverable and trash it, OK? And the other thing is, when you're running a campaign, make sure you actually fill the forms and submit them. Because if you can actually show that you've done the work, you have a much better chance of getting a penalty removed. Now, there are uh, a few different sites, if you're doing link removal, that actually have this in place. And one of the things that you can do is to keep an eye on this page, which actually is uh, what we call email exceptions. There are more than three. It's just a very long page. Um, and you'll be able to see those sites where you can actually go to a form and fill that out instead of wasting your time on email. Number four. Now, a lot of people have got bad things to say about article directories. I've got to say that this one is awesome. This guy actually gets it. 
If you find out that you have article snatch amongst the list of domains that you need to deal with, be very, very grateful. Matt Ellsworth contacted us not long after we built our tool and let us know that he offers different options for people who have articles in his directory. He's actually recognised that often spam articles were actually set up by bulk submitters. And the situation that people are in is that they have a link pointing to their site, they have no control over it. They can't actually get into that article directory to do anything about it. So what he's actually said is that he offers people the option to be able to reclaim those articles themselves. So they can either remediate the, the articles or they can actually go ahead and, and delete them. So you know, if you get someone who's actually doing the right thing uh, and he's got some other options that he offers as well. This one's very simple. WordPress hosted blogs do have a default email address. It's wordpress at subdomain.wordpress.com. Pretty simple. If you see a WordPress hosted blog, you can contact it even if it doesn't have an address on the page. OK, this one's pretty serious. This is about mindset. Write your link removal request as you would write an email to a potential new customer. I'm seeing people going, she's crazy, what's she talking about? OK. You have to think about the relationship here. It's a human to human transaction. You have to actually be a real person. And we all know as marketers that if you approach people on the right level, you often get the right response or the one that you would like to get. And imagine the person that you're writing to. Now, not the guy who was in Adam Audet's deck yesterday, the nasty looking webmaster guy, but you know, come up with someone that you can relate to, perhaps that you might like to write an email to. And if you can do that, you know, write it in the right vein, well, then you might actually end up getting success. And it could actually bring you new business. Now, this is actually an example, real world example, of a link removal request response that came back to um, someone that we were working with who actually owns a travel site. And this lady, in the process of looking at his site for due diligence, went and actually um, decided that she actually might like to use his business in the future. And what's more, she's going to bookmark it and send the URL to her relatives in case they want to come along. That's a pretty good outcome. OK, we all know that there are problems sometimes in getting domain contact information. And a lot of it revolves around the specific countries that you're actually dealing with. So you need to know your TLDs. Little tip here on Canada, private person registrations can be contacted via what they call the interested party contact form through the registrar. Oh, sorry, through the registry. Um, the, uh, the URL is there. And basically, what that means is that you can send um, the information through the registry to get to the person. And if you use certain software tools, they actually fill in the form automatically for you. For the UK, again, can be a problem because the UK actually says if you're a private person registrant, you don't have to share your email address. So what do we do about that? Well, in order to not share, they actually have to opt out of the who is. And they opt out on the basis that they're not trading. So the situation is that if they actually are trading with that domain, they are in breach of the agreement on opting out of the who is. And a big hat tip to Dave Naylor who is actually a registrar and dropped this tip at IonSearch a little earlier this year. So basically, there is a complaint form. If that person is, uh, for example, uh, using a, a 1-800 number, doing anything that would suggest that they're actually running a business with that domain, they are in breach of the private person registration. You submit the complaint form, and if it's upheld, then they will actually be returned to the who is, so you can get the information. OK, sometimes it's not all beer and Skittles, and you actually do have to be a little more serious about these things. So if you actually have a situation where you can't remove Blogger, WordPress hosted, Tumblr, those sorts of things, uh, you do actually have the option of lodging a spam report through those services. Uh, but you should really be careful that you only use it when you have to. And in fact, if you get to this point, like if I get to this point, I'm like, that's really disappointing. If I haven't actually managed to be able to find a way to get to someone and you know, put my point across in a nice way and get them to do it. 
And finally, pro tip number 10, you are asking for favours here. You're asking someone to do something for you for nothing. And my view is the occasional cookie and cupcake can't really hurt. Okay? So people bang on about paying for link removal. You know, how dare you send me a request for payment? Paying for link removal can be fun, guys. You can actually make it fun for you as well as for the person you want to remove the links. If you're sending a particularly bad link removal request, and I mean bad in terms of, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you to do a whole lot of work that I know is really going to be difficult for you, send them some cupcakes ahead of time. Ask them to, uh, you know, take it as a down payment, perhaps. And if a webmaster has been especially helpful, you could send cookies that say thank you, and who knows, you may even get a link out of it if you do, and wouldn't that be awesome? So, and it, of course, let's face it, everyone knew there was going to be cookies in my deck, didn't they? Okay, so the takeaways. First of all, some things to remember from a marketing point of view. Get your link removal outreach outstandingly right or wrong, and it may even earn you some of the best links you've ever had. Emphasis on the word earn. Three basic rules. Be a real person and prove it. Include a telephone number. Use your real name. No more hiding around saying, it's not me, I don't have a problem, you know, I'm pretending to be someone else. Oh, I was going to say I'm pretending to be a girl, but that wouldn't work, would it? Okay, every interaction is human to human. Remember it. Imprint it on your brain. And do everything you can to protect your brand. Or if you're working for clients, protect their brand. Let's face it, we all know in this room that if you get that wrong, you could end up with more of a problem than actually a penalty. And always wrap it up with tag fee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shaw. So good link removal is a lot like good link building. Actually, yes, it's, yeah. it's extremely similar. And uh, perhaps some of the little tips in the outreach Part of that might be useful for people who are building links. Uh, how many emails, what's the maximum amount of emails you send before you, you give up? Um, that, that's a really interesting question, actually, because uh, there are people who are working for just purely and simply for what they have to do. Um, we actually see in our work that and it's probably a little bit maybe, well, I'll, I'll make it tag fee, I'll make it transparent. If you send four or five emails, often the people who ignore the first three must decide that you're not going to stop, so they clean them up on four and five. So that tends to, to help. So usually, but what we also do is try and get um, multiple email addresses, not just keep sending to the same one. Gotcha. Yes. Hi, uh, Dan from Blue Tent Marketing. First off, thank you so much for speaking to this. I'm going through this with a client right now, and. Basically, I did you know all these things, and I had a lot of success. And then Google sent me an email or a Webmaster Tools message saying I didn't get all the links. And you know I balanced Open Site Explorer with Webmaster Tools with Screaming Frog. I got every link I could, and Webmaster Tools only shows a thousand. So what do I do in that situation? Okay, my, the first thing that I look at, and I know there are some people here who work a lot in link removal also, the most important thing is to get a complete look at a link profile. And if you're only going from a couple of sources, it's highly unlikely you've got that. Um, I would add most of the, I mean, everyone knows tools here that you can, you can get backlink reports from, Majestic, Ahrefs, um, you're using Webmaster Tools. Bing Webmaster Tools, remember they give you your data. It may not be the same or as, la as much data as Google, but they actually believe it belongs to you, so take advantage of that. And another little one that I actually um, stumbled upon is that quite often, if you look in analytics and you look at your referral report, use the toggle to turn it upside down and turn your date back 12 months. Look at all the links that only have one click, and often those are links that people have built and checked and you'll find all kinds of crazy, crazy spammy stuff in there. Oh, so awesome. That's, that's a really good tip. Thank you. Okay. Andrew. Hey, thanks. Andrew Shotland. Uh, I've got a client that's a UGC site, has probably upwards of about 15 million links or so. Um, got hit by uh, the latest Penguin update. Uh, it turns out a lot of their links are probably from spammers who created profiles and backlinked. Um, most of those links are on truly spammy, scrapey sites that don't answer email. Um, and there are, you know, I don't know, probably tens of thousands of domains, it feels like. 
what, where do you start with that? Okay, so the first thing is if you actually have the ability to get to the webmaster, um, in some of those cases where I've seen, if they're forums and things like that, a lot of those webmasters are kind of going, I've been deluged by spammers, I don't know what to do. Send them an email and suggest to them that they could actually do a bulk update of their database and they could get rid of all those profiles anyway, because generally those fake profiles are like, um, they, they make a profile, they might lodge one post. I've seen someone who had thousands of fake profiles that they never even made a post. It's really easy for the webmaster to find those. If you can't find the information, do everything you can to, to try and find information. But if you can't, then actually just make your case to Google. Say, okay, I've done everything I can to find the information for this. Document what you've done. We make notes on domains. You know, we tell them exactly what we've done to, to try and do something. And they will accept that you can't find information. So you just need to show them you've done the work. Thanks. Thank you, Shaw. Thank you. Thanks for coming to Seattle.